Hi guys, we're back with another video on our bioactive terrariums which we have been working on all weekend and we just got them finished today. I'm so excited. I just want to give a shout out to Brian at the Reptarium because we visited there yesterday and we got so much inspiration from him and all of his setups to put ideas into ours. So right now we are going to be introducing the springtails and isopods which are the cleanup crew. They will eat all of my animals poop and leftover food and stuff and you won't ever need to change these cages for like 10 plus years. So these are the springtails. I'm just going to kind of try to divide them up here because I've got two cages I'm putting them into. I want to see if there's any deeper down. It looks like there are still some deeper down. Get all that charcoal. All this is going to go in. Let's try to bang the rest out because they lay their eggs all over this charcoal. So the more you can get in, the more you'll have in there. I'm just going to try to divide it up for each cage. It's making a little bit of a mess. And I'm just going to get a little flashlight and see if I can see them. I just want to make sure Springtail's made it into each cage. If you look real closely, you can see them. They're like little white. I tiny. see a lot in here. Hard to see probably in a video. There you go. But they're moving around over. and I see a lot in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump each of these in, all the charcoal, because like I said, their eggs are in the charcoal. This is a lot. I may have to dig a bigger hole here. Mm. So I'm trying to make a hole because they'll want to be underground and I don't want this charcoal really on the surface. So I'm just gonna dig a large hole and try to pour these in, which is going to be difficult as we already have it all nice and set up with the plants and vines. Lots of people will pour their springtails and isopods in before they plant and everything. That wasn't quite an option for us. It was still smelling like silicone. And we didn't want the smell of silicone to be bothering the springtails and isopods. But we did want to continue setting up. So, let's mix that in. And I'll try. I hate the smell of this charcoal, but it'll get all worked into the ground here. And I'll then try to cover it up. My plant here, I may have to, to water that some to get all the charcoal off. Yeah, as you can see, we have lots of various colors of plants in here. We've got a nice wandering dew to climb down look really pretty once it's fully grown. There are some more spring gales in here. I just don't want to waste any of them. So I will try to seed a little bit more over here. Maybe it's better with my hands. Maybe I should have done that. Now this part is kind of a mess, but these guys are going to keep the cage so much cleaner. So it's worth it. And this charcoal will completely just decompose as the lifespan of the vivarium goes on. All right, so over here we have the white tree frog vivarium, quite a bit bigger, so I'm hoping it'll be easier to spread the charcoal out in here. Just prepare some holes where I want to bury it, mainly. I have a nice opening right here with nothing really above it. So I'll try to put most of it here. And all the springtails will spread out eventually. You won't really see springtails. They're just so tiny. So we'll never really see them in here, but we'll know they're, they're in there because this is a nice large culture. If you guys are wondering, I got these springtails and the isopods you'll see later from Josh's frogs. Definitely recommend them. It said it was going to be 25 isopods. It definitely came with way more than that, so I'm very happy. And the springtails, obviously, as you can see, there's just a ton of those in this culture. So that is looking good. We got 
the charcoal seeded in there, all the springtails. I'm just gonna wipe the charcoal off my hands and we will do the isopods. So I will show you guys the isopods first. If you guys have ever seen like pill bugs or roly polies outside, sometimes they're called wood lice also, that's what these are. But they're a tropical variety, there's one right there. And since they're tropical, they're gonna do a little bit better in the high humidity setup that I have going on. So we'll use these same containers and try to divide them up so I get even amounts in both. So I'm not seeing a ton in here, but they will breed and there's probably lots of eggs in here as well. So just try to divide them in half. And I'll probably seed this with some um, isopods from my yard outside eventually just because this didn't come with a ton and I don't know how long it will take for their population to really start booming. Oh, the carrot in there, I was feeding them. So again, I kind of just want this dirt they came in to be underneath the leaf litter. So I will put it down and then I will cover it up with leaves. And the isopods will really start thriving in here as compared to that little dish that they've been in for the last week since I got them. And then moving on to the white street frog. I'm gonna to try to put these on the other side since we put the springtails over on the left. This is definitely easier to do before you put all your decorations in, but like I said, ours was still smelling like silicone at that point. And we only have this weekend because we're college students, so we wanted to get it all planted and done. So I'll just let them settle in and cover everything back up with these. So these lights I have on here are grow lights that are specifically to grow the plants. The white tree frog will have his own heat lamp as well, and the crested geckos don't really need any other lighting or heat. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll be back with more videos when we introduce the guys to these habitats.